Yeah, hi everyone. Now that we have finally finished the recurrent neural network lecture, we can now finally focus on the generative modeling part of this course. So we will start simple with an autoencoder. So an autoencoder is essentially an architecture that allows us to encode data into a smaller representational yeah, representation. And also one concept of this is to reconstruct this into the original dimensional space. Um, I would say by itself, it's maybe not super useful to have an autoencoder, but this is like a great introduction to follow up topics that we will be talking later uh, on about. For instance, a variational autoencoder, which allows us to sample data from a distribution. And we will also talk about a generative adversarial network, which is also essentially somewhat related to the autoencoder here. So in, in the context of the autoencoder, we will also encounter topics like um, deconvolutions and so forth, which will be of course then also useful later on when we talk about generative adversarial networks. So with that, um, yeah, let's not spend too much time on this introduction here. I will now give you the list of topics uh, for this lecture, and then let's just dive in and see what an autoencoder is. All right, let's start by having some motivating examples of why autoencoders are interesting. Of course, in the grand scheme of things, autoencoders will be yeah, our entry point to generative models, but also autoencoders themselves can be used for interesting applications. So for instance, here, this is an autoencoder, a uh, so-called denoising autoencoder that um, yeah, cleans up speech. So it's hard to, of course, show speech on a slide because it's an audio uh, thing, not a visual thing. But here's a spectrogram of noisy speech. And the researchers used autoencoders to convert that into cleaner or clearer speech. Another interesting application of a denoising autoencoder is image enhancement. So for instance, imagine you have these noisy images here, medical images, and the researchers here use an autoencoder to recover yeah, these images from these noisy images. And for reference, the original images here are shown on the top. Of course, when you go from here to here, there's a lot of uh, detail lost, but still it's impressive that if you have an image like this, that you can recover some details despite this noise here. Or here's an application of an autoencoder I worked on a couple of um, yeah, years ago. So we had a convolutional autoencoder here that we implemented for yeah, privacy enhancements. So here we had the goal um, to, let's say, um, remove gender information while retaining the matching accuracy. Of, of face matchers. So face matchers are often used, for instance, um, yeah, for security purposes like passport scanners and so forth. And nowadays, yeah, we have security cameras everywhere keeping track of lots of things. And so the idea was, uh, how can you minimize the data collection? For instance, um, you still want the images to be useful for verification purposes, for instance, checking whether someone um, shouldn't be here, let's say, checking something against a criminal database, but um, not, let's say, in general, collecting information that uh, wasn't yeah, supposed to be collected where the person didn't, have, uh, didn't give consent to, for instance, gender information. In any case, so these were just some applications of autoencoders. So here in this lecture, the topics uh, are those five topics here. It will be hopefully not a very long lecture because yeah, autoencoders themselves are very interesting, but uh, we will talk more about autoencoders too in the next lecture when we talk about variational autoencoders. So this is here the big picture introduction where we will first talk a little bit about dimensionality reduction. Then I will introduce fully connected autoencoders. These are essentially autoencoders um, similar to multilayer perceptrons where we have uh, fully connected layers. Then we will extend this concept to uh, convolutional autoencoders, which work better with images. Then I will show you how we can implement a convolutional autoencoder in PyTorch. And lastly, I will also highlight some other types of autoencoders. One would be the variational autoencoder, which we'll be revisiting in the next lecture then.